This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Parental discretion is advised. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza. SliceOnBroadway.com. IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash Wrestling Mayhem Show. Gentlemen, it's the Wrestling Mayhem Show, episode 637 Tuesdays. We've been celebrating professionalized wrestling. I am Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter here in the Sorgatron Media Studios in uh, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. With me is a duo cast. It is a two cast, but without you out there in the Mayhem Nation, it is Mad Mike in Poughkeepsie, New York. What up, it's your boy, Mad Mike. Bah, 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 bah. Wow. Wow, yeah, you think I you know. were the one that saw DJ Z twice in one weekend like, recently? Sorg, I see DJ Z all the time in I, my head. I am so happy every time he points, hey DJ, and then he plays the noise. He did it both nights. That's my favorite. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Anyways, <laughs> and then I learned about lucha wrestling. <laughs> but anyways, anyways, um, with, with, with this is the Wrestling Mayhem Show. It is the two of us. It's just the two of us. And may- we can and- podcast if we try. No, we try. And Mayhem <laughs> Miss, or no producer of Mayhem Missy <laughs> is with us. My brain is still jelly from doing PodCon a couple of nights ago, <laughs> so we're gonna go with this. Uh, but anyways, you can check us out. We're at WrestlingMayhemShow dot com. You guys join us on the Facebook Live over on the Wrestling Mayhem Show Facebook page at nine p.m. Eastern time every Tuesday night. WrestlingMayhemShow.com is where you can find the links to subscribe to us in podcast and video form or look us up on your favorite platform. If we're not there, let us know and we'll try to get you on there as well. Also, drop us an email address at that crazy place. Good times! <laughs> Good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com or 412-206-WMS0. Tweet us at Mayhem Show and please join the Facebook page and group. A lot of great discussions in the Wrestling Mayhem Show Facebook group. It's the one that now has Sasha Banks in a train. No, 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 not that. I you're, okay, you're imagining this, and not not in that way, Sorg, not in the fan Sorg, fiction way. Sorg, in this climate, in this climate, Sorg, I mean, we've had Mickey James run over by a train. You keep Sasha Banks the fuck away from a train, Sorg. What would be bad if I just threw the Sasha Banks <laughs> stand up in front of the team? <laughs> Just reenactment. <laughs> there is there is an elevated platform like a block and a half from the studio. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, I'm gonna well, if, go. For... If you do that, you also have to say sorry about your damn luck. Moving on. Okay. Uh, anyways, you can also um, support this show through Patreon. patreoncom slash wrestling mayhem show. Uh, thank you to our Patreon supporters at the fan of the show one dollar level. Bo diggity! Woo! As well as Ed Burke, Bobby F. J. Town, Tina Keys, and the Matthew and Jennifer Carlin Foundation for Podcast Betterment. And at the Pocky Club five dollar level, Occupy Pro Wrestling, Christopher Bishop, Bradley Brothers, Doc Remedy, and Dave Podner of the Tiny Shutter Podcast, and at the Peace Club $10 level, Billy F. N. Johnson. Um, and you guys can support the show at patreon.com slash Show. It is the beginning of October. That means that the payments have gone through. Thank you so much. You guys are literally, um, or at least starting to come come through. Uh, you guys are literally helping us keep the lights on here in the studio. Except for that one over there. All the lights went out on that one. We need to replace them. You're not helping and, things keep... Uh, pl- you're not helping keeping things plugged in, though, apparently. No, 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 no. That's a whole other issue that we need to <laughs> resolve. All right. Let's get to talking about some wrestling, Mike. Do we have to? <laughs> well, I mean, we were talking about plenty of other things, like this Toys R Us and, and, and Mellow Mike and other things on the mm-hmm. uh, on, on that uh, 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 Mayhem Gold that will be on the Patreon for our $5 and up followers uh but uh i I was excited well okay i'm excited and i'm sad about this because neville is back in evolve no dragon gate wait wait are we happy about that sure okay if he's happy i'm happy i mean he always looks pissed that's kind of his thing these days 
Um, but he did come back. I don't know why a video is playing in the corner on my phone. Um, but uh, yeah, so he, so I guess, I mean, he's not far. He's at Dragon Gate, which is practically evolved, which mm-hmm. is like practically um, the undercard to NXT, right? Okay. So it's not like he went far. But I have a feeling, Sorg, if there's a Lucha Underground season five, I want, oh. I want, I want, ne- I want Neville to be the antithesis to Aerostar, mm-hmm. another flying, pissed off time traveler. Like I want them to make Neville Mighty Mouse, Oof. essentially. Oof. No, no, like subvert it. Like that's what they wanted to do in WWE because WWE is full of fucking idiots sometimes. But, like, do that, but subvert it and have him go up against Aerostar. And have him just be this pissed off guy from the cosmos, like fucking Thanos. Jeez. Um, and this is. Or like Adam Warlock. <laughs> I, I'm trying to. This. The, yeah, but, so I'm. Okay. When I saw Dragon Gate, I presume Dragon Gate USA. But this is Dragon Gate Japan. Mm hmm. Because I think USA really just kind of. Uh, um, got absorbed by Evolve here in the States. Um so so this is his Japan run. Um and Yeah, a, which is better. Yeah, which is better, yes. Man, I, is there a way to see Dragon Gate easily for the rest of us, I wonder. I mean sure there's DVDs or something out there, but um sad that we're not seeing him in WWE because I mean really um him in two oh five live was like one of the nicest surprises, right? I mean, yeah, but I, I think if he was going to go back there, I would have liked to see him in NXT UK. That's true too, uh, but that's really just kind of getting on the table now. Maybe if it comes back around, we we could see him involved of, in, in that too. So I feel like I feel like he would like just not tower over everybody, but just um um stick out a little <laughs> bit there. But well, he would because he's more of a known quantity than most of those other mm-hmm. guys. Mm-hmm. Punishment Martinez is finished up with Ring of Honor and heading to WWE. Uh, Mike, I know you're not watching a long, lot of Ring of Honor, but are you aware of Punishment Martinez? Uh, he was at All In. Oh, there you go. So you do have an awareness of him. Yeah. Um, he has a weird torso. <laughs> so him and Baron Corbin will make one hell of a deal. Oh, boy. I, um, I, I, I say this on either on Twitter or on, on the Facebook. Don't be surprised because he was one of those guys that he's tall and he's kind of, I don't want to say lanky. Um, but you know, he's not terribly muscular, right? Um, expect him to have a much improved body by the time he debuts on NXT. When, by the time, like, hey, we're not just talking with somebody the other day about like, once like that performance center, um, once they're, they're, their trainers and everything, get their hands on you. That sounds weird. Hold on. Roll that back. Roll that back, Mike. Um, but, but seriously, like, look at like, you know, Elias now. Once you're being paid to literally do nothing but work out for 24 hours a day, seven days a week, right. you're gonna look jacked, right? But but also you have access to people that know how to work with your body, right? Like yeah. experts on top of that. Plus, your job is to work out and get better, right? Yeah. So it, I, I wish I could get paid to work out. I'd I'd be I'd be jacked all, I'd be jacked as all get out. That's right. You'd be muscle, Mike. Yes, exactly. Another Mike. <laughs> Another mic. These are all the mics of different timelines. Absolutely. So we didn't get to do wrap up last night. Uh, we didn't. But you know what? Rob basically aired a rerun, so it's okay. Uh, yeah, there, there's that too. But there was something special that happened last night, and that was Seattle. Mm-hmm. I I blame Tina. I blame Tina yes. and um and um, that left shrimp. <laughs> Those are, those are the people I blame. That's right. They were making all the noise so much because I, I, if you didn't watch, maybe you didn't. Um, it was uh, Elias and and Kevin Owens, and they're doing a fantastic segment. And then all of a sudden, they talked about the Supersonics leaving. Where did the Supersonics go, by the way? Help me out with uh, the sports. They, they turned into the Oklahoma City Thunder. Oh, okay. So they got thunderized. Um, wow. Thunder. That's that's definitely a way of saying it. Okay. Um, and uh, it was brought up. And, uh, man, did Seattle react to this? Oh, did they? But, Sorg, like, it was, 
the loudest heat we've heard in a long time. But thank God, if if there's a reaction too loud and the talent is getting too over, we know exactly how to nip that in the bud. I'm going to wait till Sorg finishes drinking so he doesn't spit it all over the microphone. We have Bobby Lashley. What other than that? Leo Rush coming out. They <laughs> mellowed right out when they saw Leo. Leo, Leo was not ready for that. <laughs> Leo was not ready for that shit. No, like he he he's he's fine on the microphone. Mm-hmm. They might as well have just sent the Undertaker out at that point. They might as well. They might as well have just sent the Undertaker out at that point because th- there are, there are not too many people who could have counteracted that and gotten the fans on their side. Uh, Leo Rush and Bobby Lashley was not the tandem to do it. <laughs> Oh boy, uh, yeah, yeah. But anyways, uh, that was that was, that was kind of uh, uh, Norm Connor is a, uh, a Pittsburgh, a former Pittsburgh wrestling promoter here in the area. Uh, uh, I saw him on Twitter talking about how how this is probably not, not seen this kind of heat since Vicky Guerrero. Yeah, but I mean, see, and this is the thing that because it's, it's not really heat on Owens and Elias, mm-hmm. like it's not. It's they were going for a cheap pop and just happened to strike a nerve. <laughs> uh, it's, but it's the, like if you're shaving and you accidentally hit an artery. Yeah. You're yeah. like, oh, God, what did I do? Oh, God, why is Seattle bleeding out? Yeah. <laughs> so, some might say in Seattle, when it rains, it pours. Hmm. Because it rains a lot there, so like, mm. huh? Nothing. Mm. Mm-hmm. Okay, we need more people to laugh at my jokes. But so much- <laughs> so like, you're not helping. Yeah, me out we here. need to get some more people on there. Like, <laughs> you definitely. <laughs> we need some help getting you over. Maybe we can pipe in some laughter for you. Yeah. And and Dave is saying the ratings are bad. Dave, football. Yeah. Yeah. Football. <laughs> the um, football. Patrick Mahomes, my boy. My boy in fantasy this year. Jesse's but, Jesse's here in the chat. Yeah. And yells, can we all take a minute to appreciate Mad Mike's beard? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, it, it, that's it, going on. That's looking a lot better than when I did to mine. Yeah, it's uh it's it's grown up pretty well. It's grown yeah. up pretty well. I'm actually uh debating on being Logan for Halloween this year. Ooh, this is with a purpose. This yes. sounds like pre show well, material. No, not really. I'm actually just lazy. <laughs> <laughs> And plus, I I've been told by certain uh, curious parties that they like the beard. So, mm. yeah, curious party. All right, uh, we got. So anyway, of- Sorg, back yes. to Raw, and all right, I I want to give credit where credits due because okay. if we did do the wrap up last night, this was something I was going to talk about, and I was very happy with, which is weird coming from me because it's about Raw. I think the best part of the show last night, and I cannot believe I'm saying this. Oh, wait, can I take a guess? Sure. Was it Ronda Rousey? Yes, it was. Holy Ronda, shit. Ronda Rousey versus Welcome. Ruby Riot. Welcome. Was, um, now, don't get it twisted. This is because of Ruby Riot and her amazing. Okay. If you put Ronda in the ring with, like, Sasha or Bailey or other people who can work and are not just Alexa Bliss fodder, you're going to get the same results. I don't know enough about Liv. Um, I know that between Ruby and uh, damn it, Sarah. Sarah, thank you. I was going to say Crazy Mary, but that's not her anymore. Um, you have a good at least pair of talented wrestlers there, right? Oh, so yeah. I mean, between them alone, and then working with Ronda and, and and everything, you know, whatever you think is going on with the Bellas, um, yeah, yeah. Well, it looked like Liv was okay. She definitely seemed a little bit more She's gingerly fine. walking. Sword, she had a concussion. Okay, so, okay, she's she's yeah, fine-ish. Like- Sword concussions take people out of wrestling. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Like that—that's not something to fuck around with. Yeah, like, and and and, and uh, I, I want to roll back to that because you know a lot of people, including on our account, some of us were were really rough on uh, that what went down last week with uh, with that. 
And I love like all the just about every wrestler response I got was like, yeah, stuff happens in the ring. Yeah, but I so. stand by my statement that Brie Bell is not safe in the ring. Mm-hmm. Stuff happens, obviously. Not I'm not even saying she did it on purpose. I'm saying she needs to get better. She's always needed to get better, and she shouldn't be in that high profile of a match if she is unsafe. Mm-hmm. She should be going down to a performance there instead of going to fucking Birdie Bee. Did you see No, that? I'm serious. Like she should be training. Mm-hmm. I don't believe she's training. No, no, no. Yeah. Like she should be training to get to get the ring rust off. When whenever Rock comes back for a match, he works out like a madman with like someone like Ty Dillinger for a couple months to get the ring rust off because he doesn't want to injure anyone in the ring. Mm-hmm. Like this is not me saying that that Bree should like quit the business or anything like that. I mean, I don't think she should be wrestling. But, you know, if she wants to, that's her prerogative. She needs to train. She needs to train and really knock off the ring rust. Because, let me tell you something, that wasn't Liv's fault. Right. Uh, so, uh, first of all, I'm going to move on here, but we have to mention that Ty Cross is in the chat room. Who the fuck is that? <laughs> I think, he's a, I think he's a baseball player or something. Um, but know. anyways, did he uh, invent high cross buns? Yeah, I don't know. His name came up a lot this weekend. Will he make you jump, jump? <laughs> if you haven't caught, it, if it's in, maybe you haven't seen it in your feed, maybe you just uh, tune in there on Wednesday mornings when we come out on your podcast feed. But go look back. There is a uh, special edition of Wrestling Mayhem Show from Pittsburgh PodCon where we did have uh, Edric Everhart, who apparently has a podcast. Huh. <laughs> How about that? Uh, like muscling in on our turf, Sorg. No, it's not about wrestling, though. It's not about wrestling at all. Sorg, you have many podcasts that are not about wrestling. Yeah, it's not about anything we do. I think they tell stories on there. I like to think I tell a story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm joking. Yeah. I never tell stories. <laughs> But uh, but no, we had Edric on, and we also had Charlie Deach of the uh, Pittsburgh Current, uh, and then the Riz made an appearance towards the end there, uh, part of a really awesome night we had there on Sunday. So, uh, but no, that was really cool. So, um, go check that out. That is uh, on our page there, and the video versions are over on the Wrestling Mayhem Show Facebook and the YouTube page. So, <laughs> uh, uh, yep. Or apparently, uh, Brad Bradley in the chat room says Ty Cross is a wrestler. Oh, a wrestler, a um, wrestler. How novel for this show. Oh, OK. All right. All right. <laughs> but anyways, hey, oh, uh, we uh, have a lot going on here in the wrestling world. Um, and in addition to the uh, U- indie wrestling dot U.S. site where you can pick up a lot of titles, including brand new ones like RWA's Fall Free for All, which included the debut over there of Magnum C.K., which was fantastic in the main event uh, match over there, uh, as well as uh, Tony Gunn. I'm sure the the cousin of Billy Gunn by the spelling of his last name that I can tell. Uh, but no, he was he was uh, had a really awesome match against Shane Andrews. A really fun show, as well as the IWC Proving Ground Seven, both available on VOD rental or purchase as low uh, titles over there as low as two ninety nine. Uh, for those for a rental, so to go, go check them out, go check that out, IndieWrestling.us. And also, we've recently launched a formal network, just like those guys with the three letters that we occasionally talk about here way too much. Uh, it has uh, some of uh, Joe Dabrowski's stuff, including the Montreal Theory, some welterweight wrestling, premier wrestling. Check out Rise Wrestling with a Y, including some guy named Ty Cobb, Ty Cross, whatever it is. Uh, and so many more of the guests here on the show, including PWO TV, the original run of episodes from like well over 10 years ago that aired on uh, television up in the Cleveland area, including Johnny Gargano, Gregory Iron, Josh Prohibition, um, I think a, a young Madison Rain, and so many more. Go check it out at www.indywrestling.net or get your seven day free trial and go check it out. And then Duke and Doe's Hardcore Memories, where I learned how to. Um, try out pants without putting them on. Or learned how Surly Doe learned that from the Sandman. Because the Sandman is everybody's drunk uncle. Mm-hmm. 
Oh, okay. Yes. I'm intrigued and terrified at the same time. Life lessons from Sandman, as told by Shirley Doe, on the latest edition of episode six of Hardcore Memories. And I do believe next week. So there's a lot of stuff I've been cutting out of those because they they listen when Duke Davis and Shirley Doe get together. There's a lot of tangents, okay, including including why why strippers really need to consider their entrance music, and how Duke Davis is in the same business as them. More or less. I mean, um, there's actually more contact than what he does. <laughs> actually, yes. <laughs> so, um, things like that. We're going to be releasing um, a, a few of those, uh, I believe, next week uh, in between our, our recording sessions here. Uh, so, you're going to see a little bit of that. And, and, and the best thing I heard from Shirley Doe to Duke Davis. So, what is PCO like? Oh, jeez. Mm-hmm. They, they, they want to talk about PCO like every time I get in here. But anyways. I'm going to get to see him. PCO? Oh, yeah. boy. Mm-hmm. Oh, boy. It is something. It is something. Uh, uh, so I just want to jump back to something Tina said in the chat room that uh, Bree's also a mom to an 18-month-old. An 18-month-old. And I understand that. That's why I feel she shouldn't be wrestling. Mm-hmm. She should just focus on being a mom, or if she wants to just be like a manager, that's fine. But if you are going to get into the ring, you need to train to make sure you don't hurt anyone. Like I, I want to one, I, I want to careful with your words there. Uh, <laughs> first of all, Mike, but also I want to point out Maurice is like four months out. Yes, but Maurice did not bump. Okay. Okay. Maurice didn't bump. Maurice, the the match Maurice had versus Brie Bell was literally running around. Mm-hmm. Maurice did one move. Mm-hmm. One move that's safe as all get out. Brie's in their wrestling matches almost every week. That's why I'm, and she's going to be heavily featured on things like Super Showdown. And I'm sure on Evolution. Maurice probably will not be. Maurice was there a further an angle. Right. Right. Like and that was it. Yeah, Maurice was there essentially to be an extra body because if you put Miz with his mixed match tag team partner Asuka, well then it'd be a subtle <laughs> mismatch. Oh, it? the man Mike is or I'm sorry, uh, Matt Carlin's is getting you in trouble in the chat room. <laughs> Paraphrasing. No, I'm not <laughs> Matt, I am not saying that at all. You're saying you're I'm saying Bree needs to get all. back I'm in the saying, kitchen and make more babies. No, no, I'm no. I'm not no, saying no. that at all. I'm saying if she wants to wrestle. She needs to train off her ring rust. Yes. I'm, I'm, whatever she wants to do, that is her prerogative. Whatever she wants to do. She wants to have it all and do everything. Fine. But train. Train and get the ring rust off. Otherwise, you're going to take out people on the roster. All right. Mm-hmm. Moving on here. Yeah, moving on, on here. We got way more to talk about. That's less Plus, uncomfortable. Plus, I do not want any more Bellas to reproduce. <laughs> They can if they want. Uh, I personally don't want them. Oh, uh, boy. Oh, uh, boy. Uh, <laughs> that includes, the, that wait, includes their brother. Wait a minute. Producer, that guy. producer Missy's putting kayfabe news stories in the uh, in the, uh, <laughs> in, the, in the rundown. I, uh, I, uh, fake news. Fake news. But this was funny. Old Code Rat signed to WWE after Triple H has accidentally photographed pointing at it. <laughs> It almost feels like something they would do. Because I'm pretty sure... What? Whose name is next to that? It's Kayfabe Staff. Wait, which name? That was posted K-fabe. by that was posted by Riz. Okay. Of course. Oh, and I'm so sorry. I've not been saying the names next to the stories as we bring them up. Uh, Tina shared with us the one about uh, Neville coming back to Dragon, Dragon Gate. And uh, and Matt Carlin's brought up the one about Punishment Martinez. So, uh, 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 Matt Carlin's actually got to interview uh, par- Punishment par- uh, Punishment um, Matt. Or, uh, perhaps K-K. in the chat room you can let us know what does Punishment smell like. Yes, yes, uh, yeah. Because I don't think I was there at the show when he was here with IWC. So like I think that was a post edit for me. Um, but I'm sure it's a it. He smells like pain and remorse. I feel like he just smells like. The old spice that they made in the eighties. I think he probably just smells like the inside of a hot topic in nineteen ninety seven. Oh jeez. 
Uh, hey, Sorg. Sorg. Mm. Do you want to do a rundown of Super Showdown? Oh, I guess we should do a pay-per-view rundown. <laughs> what is happening? You know what, Mike? Mike, I want you to tell me. I usually lead this. Do you have it up? Um, I don't, but for some reason, I think I know most of the matches. Okay. <laughs> uh, the answer is we are we are smelling punishment Martinez, producer Missy. Uh, <laughs> but what is so okay? We, Sorg, are, you, are you excited? We for, no. For... <laughs> I mean, I'm not even going to be able to see it until like Monday. First of all, because there's That's too fair. because there's too much wrestling in Pittsburgh um, mm -hmm. that I'm involved in. <laughs> okay, like sir, sir, you realize I'm getting on off a plane back from Dallas at noon and uh -huh. going to one of two shows that we're we're filming Saturday night. Yeah, uh -huh. I will be on the plane while this event is happening in Australia, mm -hmm. and then I have to go to West Virginia on Sunday for another show. By the by the way, Sword, you want to hear something fun about this show? Mm. There's once again only three Raw matches. What is happening? What are we doing on Raw? <laughs> How do we only get three matches out of three hours every week of Raw? What are we doing? Because the Shield stretches everything out? Because and... the Shield was an hour and a half of Raw last oh, night. Oh, the boy on down to one match, and will he, won't he the, with Dean, Dean Ambrose? The Shield and Bacon oh, Mac and Cheese why... hold all the championships. You know what? Why, you know, and this is why, even though I'm a week behind still on SmackDown, I will still catch up with it because I want to, because it hurts less. Yeah, and guess what? SmackDown can program even more matches for Super Showdown. They just haven't because they have a lot of feuds going. Absolutely, absolutely. There are home invasions. There are, you know, whatever else going uh, okay, on. Okay, okay. That wasn't a home invasion. I don't know. I didn't get that far. I just seen yeah, the promos. Yeah, no, no. I, Samoa Joe walked up to a door and rang the doorbell, and then the segment cut off. Samoa Joe. WWE's own. WWE's own Jehovah's Witness this week on SmackDown. <laughs> if, he, if someone opened the door, like, can I tell you about the broken universe? Can I tell you the good news, Wendy? <laughs> <laughs> Daddy's gone night night. I wish that's what the match was called. I'm sorry. Like a Daddy Gone Night Night. I haven't match. even watched, like, obviously not watching tonight and, and or last week's, but knowing that. Yeah, so Samoa Joe went to like AJ Styles' house. I'm like, oh, I can't wait to see this. So, <laughs> uh, there's a May Young classic. What? Um, oh, I'm so bad with stuff this week. I didn't even watch Lucha Underground. I, but Mike, Mike, help me, help me. Sorg. What do I do? Sorg, here's what you need to do. Hmm. You need to stop trying to make money. And just <laughs> watch wrestling. Trying. Yes. But it's kind of the same thing. Okay. <laughs> but but right. I am successful not making money at wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, all right. Moving so, on. So moving Super on. Showdown. So do you want to start with the with the matches I'm most excited for, or the ones I'm least excited for? I mean, we know your least excited is probably uh, Undertaker and uh, and and Triple H. Yeah. Well, I, I'm it's, asking which way which way you want which way you want to go. Oh no, let's get out of way because we talked about them. Okay. I mean, I'm sure right, you're not uh, happy about Shield. So, so uh, do you want? Uh, do you think it's going to be the crazy undead zombie man, or the um, father of three with his bald friend? Yeah, where does hair go? By the way, that's both of them. <laughs> oh, because Kane is technically bald. He's wearing a wig. Oh, I, I did. I did notice though that Sean's. Uh, the hair on top of Sean's head went directly to Kane's chest. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, like Kane didn't shave his chest. It was you know, very apparent. You know, you, know, you know what's weird? And I don't know if it was the mindset I was in last night, which I talked to you. We talked. I was pretty much mush last night. For some mm -hmm. reason, when Kane come out, I forgot he had the mask still. <laughs> wow. I, I forgot which era of Kane we were in. I'm so confused by wrestling. <laughs> wow, you were out of it. Oh, boy. Guys, make sure you get your sleep. And by the way, I'm not getting sleep tonight. Uh, anyways, so, what so else is think, happening? Who do you think still wins? I don't care. Move on. It's <laughs> I don't wow. care. Apparently, uh, apparently, Australia only gets Attitude Era uh, WWE on their televisions, and that's why this match is happening. Well, yeah, 1996 just got their sword. Mm-hmm. 
1996 just got, I think I think Triple H is winning. Yeah. I think he is. Makes sense. And uh, it sounds like we're pushing to a tag match. Yay. 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 Um all right. So we have Robert Ty Cross. Lashley. This Ty Cross guy says Triple H and Taker is going to be great. Don't even pretend it won't. Oh, yeah. It's it's going to be fantastic. Uh, <laughs> all right. We have Robert Lashley and Jonathan Anthony Felix Cena versus Elias and Kevin Owens. So weird. So yeah, weird and obvious that John Cena is just like, I'm here for this one thing. I Jeez. I want to see his sixth move of sixth move of doom. The only way I can see John Cena again is to go half half a world away. Mm-hmm. Jeez. Cena only plays his big shows, brother, brother, uh, brother, brother. If he's not wearing like some kind of bumblebee gear, what are we even doing? Oh, seriously. Like oh, sword. What? What? All right, Sorg. What if, because of a promotional tie-in, Elias and Kevin Owens have Soundwave in their corner? <gasps> These are good <laughs> ideas. And oh my god! Oh my god! Soundwave is going to play Elias's album. Sorg, I just I'm did it. I'm with you. I'm with I you. I just did it. I love it. Okay, that's never going to happen. Um, yeah. All right. Uh, so Sorg. Number one contender. Oh, match oh, roll back, in. roll back, roll back, roll back. Chat room's having some things. Oh, okay. Uh, Alex Carr says the show in Australia sets up for the show in Saudi Arabia. He which says, sets up for a Survivor Series, which sets up for... No, no, oh. which sets up for the show in Antarctica. Oh, yeah. Uh, WWE, hell freezes over. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> which sets up for a network special on the moon. <laughs> it's going to happen. Mm-hmm. It's going to happen. And you know who's going to put it on, Sorg? Max Moon. Oh, you went there. Yeah, I did. You went there. I did. All right, Sorg. Uh, Number one contenders match. Daniel Bryan versus The Miz. That's going to be something. Yeah. That's going to be exciting if it has a finish. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Do do you think it's going to have a finish? (laughs) I don't know if it's going to have a finish. I think it might not. We'll see. We'll see. Here, here's what I want you to do, Mike. Okay. I want you to take out the fact that this is in Australia. I want to take. Okay. I want to take all this out, right? Okay. Yeah. And I want to take uh, Hell in a Cell. Okay. Yeah. Uh-huh. As a show. Just, uh-huh. just as a show. Yeah. And you know, because I, I feel like you're coming in with this preconceived notion that this is a house show, and nothing's going to happen. Blah 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 blah. Even though, like, we do. I mean, we do have some title matches and. Some matches of content, uh, consequence, I feel, and, and things like that. Mm-hmm. I, I after this show, I want you to watch this, and I want you to. Cause I, 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 I'm taking a bet that this is going to be more than a glorified house show to a point, right? Sork. I, I wait, wait, wait. I, and I know you disagree, and I know you disagree, but I feel like this show is going to trend more towards about what we've been getting out of shows like Hell in a Cell for the last few months. Okay. Sorry, nothing, nothing's been happening on those shows either. Right, no, that's, but, what, that's what I'm getting at. Yeah. Okay. But the, the reason I think this is going to be a glorified house show is because when we had the Greatest Royal Rumble, I was where you are. Mm-hmm. I thought a whole bunch of shit was going to happen because nothing really happened. Was it, was I calling the house show? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How the tables have turned, Mike. <laughs> Hoisted by your own petard. <laughs> what does that even mean? Oh, jeez. Um, I will say there's one thing that I think might actually happen because it makes sense. I think Joe is winning that belt. Wow. I, I'm not, like, if I was a gambling man, I wouldn't well, here, bet on it. I'd bet on AJ. Here's the other thing. Um, if they keep doing these network specials, and these keep being glorified house shows, as you say, or nothing happens, or not enough happens, or anything like that, then this is going to be a problem. It's or, already a problem. R- right. But if, if you, could, you could kind of fool me once, shame on me, you know. But if it continues, and yay, this is happening, and yay, wrestling in front of 60,000 people, but it's not like it's WrestleMania, you know? And, well, WrestleMania is hardly like it's WrestleMania these days. Um, 
so like there has to be something. Um, I feel I feel like enough did happen more or less with the Greatest Royal Rumble, right? Um, well, hold, hold on, hold on. Let, let's backtrack. What happened there? We had the cage match with the screwy finish that set up some stuff to proceeding, right? It de- it delayed the inevitable. Okay. All right. No, but no, but but it was it was a story. Because now you had Roman Reigns. It was a shitty story. I'm not saying whether it's good or not, Mike. I'm just saying it's a story structure, okay? I just, like, guys, it's WWE. It's not fucking Shakespeare. Um, but, it uh, could be. It, it, you know, it was, you know, we had that moment to show, like, you know, obviously Roman got screwed over. You know, there was a bad call, uh, you know, stuff like that. And that ideally stretched us into SummerSlam. And set up all the bad blood and the you know uh, Le- Lesnar's the worst champion and blah, 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 you know that stuff that led up to SummerSlam and then you you, you write the new chapter from there right um, we got um, new new chapter um, who's wrestling for the title in November in November who, in Saudi who, who Arabia was who was it which also sets up for the next match in Saudi Arabia so it closes the circle it's like when we go to Clearfield. And then you say, hey, guys, next time we're here, we're going to have a street, uh, 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 Clearfield street fight with Marshall Gambino and Jimmy DeMarco. But it's like six months from then. No, no, it's not like that at all. It's not like that at all. I, because, okay, I know. It's with an accent. Because IWC but... doesn't put on a weekly show. <laughs> okay. Uh, say, so... Saying that, you know... <laughs> I don't know. Have you seen our November schedule? But anyway... That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> Um, but, uh, but no, no, and so there's that, um, um, either way, I, I, I'm looking forward to see what happens from there and, and, uh, whatever happens with AJ Joe and, and seeing either Brian or Miz get into it. I think, I think, I think a Miz AJ feud would be amazing. Uh, I'd rather see Joe and Brian. I'd rather see That's... any of that. And maybe they split off and that other thing happens, right? Yeah. So sure. there's room for all of that. The question is where the belt lies. Right. Like, you're going to get something cool. I mean, um, AJ Styles Samoa Joe is a good story if you had no belt involved. I think. I, the belt, I think the belt makes the story because otherwise I don't know why Joe would be so angry about winning a match by disqualification. Right. Okay. I give you that. That does add to it a little bit. Um, Okay. Okay, I'll give All you right. that. Uh, so, so let's. Uh, Raw has two six-person tag team matches. Sorg. Right. We got the Shield versus Bacon Mac and Cheese, and the Riot Squad, maybe two thirds of them versus the Bella Twins and Ronda. Rousey. Maybe you get your special new member of the Riot Squad. Hold right. that. Hold that. Hold that for later. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. I doubt it. But, uh, yeah, those should be interesting and definitely not the same thing we've seen on Raw for weeks. Does Dean Ambrose turn on the shield at the no. event or on Raw? No? This is all no. just a tease? It's all bullshit. It's too much money to be made with the shield. Yes. It's too predictable. Like, of course another member is going to turn. Yeah, because cause the weird thing is when Rollins turned on the shield, it was after a big win. So if Dean does turn on the shield, it won't be until Raw the next Monday. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know. The, Raw last night did not make sense to me at all because if I'm Baron Corbin and I want to break up the shield, I book them in a match against each other. Right, right. Not book them against the same guys they've been fighting for three months now. Right, but also, as I'm sure you're happy that Baron Corbin basically dropped the, the, the Brock Lesnar role on, Baron, on Roman Reigns. Yeah. Oh, or why? Yep. O- really? October's going to be great, Sword. Let him be the fighting champion, please. It's not even let him be the fighting champion. It's you don't want Roman as champion. Make him defend it all the fucking time. Yeah, seriously. Like, it doesn't even make sense from a storyline perspective. It doesn't. It doesn't make sense any way you slice it. Matt's asking, "Do you think we're setting up a shield three way for Mania?" No, man, I don't. I don't think that. No, because no. it's gonna be Roman versus The Rock. Whoa. Yep. 
Is that is that what's floating around out there? That's that's the rumor I've read Man, on the internet. I can't wait for them to to put over Jumanji three. Oh man, I I don't even know. I don't even know. All right, let, let's move on to something more fun. Cedric Alexander and Buddy Murphy. Oh shit, that's happening. I haven't watched yeah, Kill Five Buddy Live Mur- in like a week. Buddy Murphy gonna get a hometown pop. Yay! I, or at least not I, a country pop. Man, that might be your takeaway for the night right there. Uh, it very well could be. It very well could be. Cedric's been like crushing it on two hundred five. <laughs> is this from Missy? I think this is this is a comment from Missy. Matt's giving WWE writers way too much credit with that one with the three way. Oh yeah, uh, uh, pro- guys. Producer Missy's throwing shade over there in the corner, <laughs> as she should be. Wow. Okay. As she should be. <laughs> Missy Missy has just come to my side of the fence. That's all. Hmm. Yeah, that's all right. It's all right, what else we got? What else we got? All right, uh, we got keep an eye on that cruise. Keep new day. Keep an eye on that cruiserweight match, and then we got the new day against the bar for the tag team titles. Okay, I heard Sheamus has an injury. Oh, that would be unfortunate. That would be very unfortunate. And then there was the the fun idea because uh, Cesaro popped up at an NXT show to uh, mm-hmm. make the save on his former indie tag team partner Chris Hero or uh, Cassius Ono. Mm-hmm. Uh, could we have a Kings of Wrestling reunion instead? Sorg, you're doing that writing thing uh, again. I don't think I. It's unfortunate, but I kind of don't see Cassius O'Neill ever on the main no, roster. No, 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 no. I don't yeah. either. Yeah, I like, like he, him. He's fine in NXT. I I think he helps out a lot of the younger guys down yeah. there. Yeah, he's never gonna be on the main roster. Yeah, honestly, I'd rather just see Cesaro in a singles run. Yeah, not with that wouldn't, lisp. Wouldn't wouldn't Cesaro versus Nakamura for the U.S. title just make your world sorg? Those cars are just like going down the rabbit hole, and then bring in uh, Icarus, Chuck Taylor, and Gran Akuma. Can we just reform BDK with that big guy that we used to think was my brother? <laughs> oh God, what was his name? Uh, Tur- Tursus. Tursus. Yeah, I think. Yeah. And um, um, Ares, I think, was the other guy. I think so. Oh, All right, um, Sorg, this may be the matchup I'm looking forward to the most. And I'm not being ironic. Uh-oh. Asuka and Naomi versus the Iconics. Jeez. Massive, massive face pop coming for the Iconics. I'm trying to think if there's any other Australian wrestlers that they would dig up for this, too. Well, what? We had Davari well, he... come back. Yeah, but... I mean, his, bro- his brother. His brother worked for the true. company already. True, 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 true. But what I want, I want the Iconics to come out with the Bushwhackers, like the, <gasps> the heel, Bushwhackers, like the heel New Zealanders. Holy like, shit! There better at least be one Bushwhacker because we know the other ones. Kind of, I was worried about him falling off the stage at the Hall of Fame. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ty Cross says Nathan <laughs> Jones. No, we're never bringing back Nathan Jones. Ah, and Matt, Matt on delay. Will the Bushwhackers show up to be in the Iconics corner? <laughs> oh, he just looks at their face. <laughs> They're just it's so great. Like, uh... sorry, would you love it if the if the Iconics came out with their pinkies entwined with each other, doing alternating Bushwhacker pose? That could be good. That could be good. Just if they got the coronation down. Yeah, it'd be great. All right, and finally, we have a women's championship match on this show, Sword. Whoa! Char Char versus Bex. No way! Oh, yeah. Okay, that's one to watch out for, too. Char Char versus Bex. I mean, no title's going to change hands, but it's going to be a fun match. Oh, boy. I think I'm catching up with Lucha on the plane. SmackDown, I can't download. I'm I'm, I'm doing my... (laughs) Dude, I'm going to have, like, kind of a day and a half off. It's just going to be watching wrestling for Dallas <laughs> to catch my ass up. Oh, boy. All I'm right, guys. Sad. Well, hey, you know what? Uh, you know, I'm sad. Well, I'm, I'm not sad because Mad Mike is here. No, I'm sad because wow. there's nobody else here in the studio. Because, man, did, did you see that picture? Slice on yeah, Broadway you, hooked you us up. Holy there's hell. Man, uh, I was hoping it would entice some of our local people to uh, join us here in studio. But, uh, man, they hooked us up. Uh, when you, you cancel an order on Tuesday night, thank you, because they sent it our way. 
Uh, but our friends at Slice on Broadway <laughs> supporting per, uh, supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza uh, since the beginnings from their one location right up the street here now to four locations all around Pittsburgh, including PNC Park Home, the Pittsburgh Pirates. Thank you so much for them. Uh, and uh, please go check them out if you're in town or just tweet them and thank them or let them know when the drone or teleporting or they're putting a location in your area, uh, wherever that may be across the nation here. Because I know you guys are all over the place. So hit them up. PGH underscore Slice on the Twitter or SliceOnBroadway.com. Guys, we're going to go to a quick message and we'll be right back with the big question. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at SidekickMediaServices.com. Mike, Mike, I already yeah. record. We're back on the show. What do we do now? Sorg. I, d- I don't know. You you hit record. Yes. Have we done? Have we done? Where should WWE go next? Yes, we have. Shit, we did that one too. Uh huh. Mad Mike. Sorg, our big question: What is our new gimmick for coming back from break? Go. <laughs> Let's go back to remember when. Oh, uh, <laughs> I can do. Re- I can do a bunch of remember whens. Remember when? <laughs> however that tune went i don't even remember Remember when? all right i got one in <laughs> i love i love I, this is real we're just keeping it real here on the show it's just one of those weeks <laughs> our big question remember when we did remember when <laughs> No, I have one here. Um, International right. Podcast Day was this weekend. We talked a little bit. International on... Podcast Day. Damn it, Mike. Uh, but we did, and this is for you guys out there. Um, we we did a little bit of chatter about um about wrestling podcasts. Not as much as I wanted to because the wrestling podcaster didn't make it to the show. But um, so my big question is, what is other than the Mayhem Show? What mm-hmm. is the best? Uh, wrestling podcast out there you know and i'm thinking more like the uh uh wrestlers podcast or people in wrestling podcast uh out there today Ooh. um i don't listen to as many anymore mm-hmm. just because some of them have gotten just really like not good yeah yeah like, like, they've, like they've run out of things to talk about yeah, like you can tell they don't watch as much product mm-hmm. anymore, and that greatly hinders what they can talk about. Uh, I still love Edge and Christian show. That's mine. That's mine too. Yeah, um, it it is. I I think it it does well because it that thing is like like Jericho and Stone Cold and and Jr. They're kind of flying without a net. Like they don't have somebody guiding them. They are doing the podcast right. Mm-hmm. I mean, they have a secondary producer and everything like that, and they have a lot of ads. Yeah, well, a, they have a they have a lot that of ads. Corporate, did you, hey, hey, did you know podcasting's dead again? It is. Yeah, yeah, that's the latest. Shit, news. I thought print was dead. <laughs> that's what they told me in you Ghostbusters mean, in 1982. That's sure. not official since our on our podcast network is now a print magazine. <laughs> In Pittsburgh Current. Prince is <laughs> so, alive again. It's alive. We are single handedly bringing it back in Pittsburgh. <laughs> oh, I hope Charlie. Oh, Ch- actually, I know Charlie does listen to the show. Hey, Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, anyways, uh, no, and I think that's, you're right. That's what happens with Edge and Christian is they have each other to play off of and Tommy mm-hmm. Dreamer. Tommy. Um, so, so like shit happens like you know uh edge has you know he's shooting on vikings he's like yeah i can't watch anything because i've been literally on the set all hours of the day right mm-hmm. um kind of like my current issue where i'm just on the run and haven't been able to sit down to watch uh 12 hours of wrestling this week right um so so they can play off of something like that and and they are really good because they both had while similar same generation, like they both had wildly different careers, right? Um yeah. like at different parts of the card with different um kinds of opponents, um, different things that happen with their characters. So I, I think that's cool because it's not just like like I feel like Steve Austin gets himself over in his interviews too often, right? 
Um, um, he does. Jericho does. Jr. Yeah. does. And 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 I, as much as possible, and maybe it's just because I'm a nobody compared to the people we talk to on on our interview shows. Like I I I, I really try to get out of the way, right? And let you know it's it's about the interview. Right. Yeah. At that like, point, like Christian puts himself over in their interviews, but that's because it's a that's gimmick. That's the that gag. Put, yeah. It's, it's a gimmick. He that's puts fine. himself over, and like he gets called out on every single time. No, that's absolutely like, fine. That, that's, that's a funny gimmick. I and I have been been enamored with like, jeez, the I really want to know too much about wrestling. Bug gets itched with the uh, something to wrestle with in the uh, eighty three weeks podcast. Um, for me right now. Like those are those are my like hey I got a little bit of extra time let's throw one of those on you know yeah okay yeah. tell me all about Roddy Piper and uh in WCW this week right um like and you can't beat that and you're you're not gonna get there from a lot of other places so you know, those those kind of insidery kind of uh, different perspectives I mean it's like it's exactly what we're trying to do with Duke and Doe right because mm-hmm. there are two wrestlers one that grew up watching ECW. One that was practically there in EC, not in ECW, but around it, knows the people, wrestled the people, um, was like on the fringes of ECW physically, right? Like, trust me, very, very close to the situation, especially with Sandman uh, and things like that. And you can tell by the stories they're telling on our show. But um, what? Quack does a wrestling podcast? I used to like, I used to listen to Mike Quack and Bush's um, uh, Grizzly Beg, Grizzly. Grizzly Bear, Grizzly Egg, Grizzly Bear Egg Cafe. Damn it! I think I got all the right words, but I don't know if they're in the right order. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's him and his friend um, that uh, is actually on Fox and Friends. Um, don't hold that against them if you have that opinion. Um, but but uh, but really good discussions. And Mark, it's just a geeky podcast, and they're really interested in bare naked ladies. And and they interviewed Stan Bush, which that got my attention. Um, Sorg, if that's the case, uh, when they come back. Did they talk about the last podcast saying it's been one week? Oh boy! Um, ah. But no, I would love to listen to the the Kfabe two point oh one for Quack. I'm, I'm gonna pull up the podcast app. <laughs> I feel. Uh, let's see. Bullet Club. Bullet Club does a podcast. No, being the elite is a t- is a sh- being the elite. Wait, is there? Podcast. Do they do a being an elite podcast as well? I that seems to make so. sense, but I, I don't know how they have time to do all this stuff. Um. Also, I I listen to a different podcast. It doesn't have any wrestlers on it. Uh, it's called Smart Wrestling Fan. Mm-hmm. They're pretty good. They pretty good. they do. Yeah. Um, I see them on the tweeters a lot with us. Yeah, they they do like a literal recap of every show. Really? So so it's different than a lot of other wrestling podcasts that you, they've ever heard. And they're also clean, which is <laughs> what <awesome>. bullshit. <laughs> I know. Fuck that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> No, but they, they they recap like Raw, SmackDown, Lucha pay per views every week, and then uh, they they have this uh, thing where they do a random show like from the spin of a wheel. Mm. So sometimes they'll do Mae Young, sometimes they'll do New Japan, sometimes they'll do ROH, sometimes they'll do like Miz and Misses or something. I listened for the first time to uh, How to Wrestling. Um, mm-hmm. Rob had a cameraman. Rob, we were, uh, had it on when we were heading up to uh, Cleveland for Welterweight Wrestling last weekend. Um, and there was, it's, it's, it's fun. One, there is something charming about British, the Brits talking about wrestling on podcasts. Um, and it's like the guy and his wife, and I think the wife is like only a couple year in as a fan, but man, she picked up a knowledgeable real quick. <laughs> so, and they're like, just basically recapping like, like Kevin Owens Steen's, uh, entire career. Right. Uh, at, at this thing, it, it was fun. I don't know if I could listen to every week of it. Um, but it was kind of a uh, something different, something interesting. That sounds like one of those ones where, de- excuse me, depending on who the topic was, that would depend on if I listened to it. Mm-hmm. So, um... but I also like one thing about wrestling podcasts, and I know Jericho probably is the worst offender on this. I don't like it when um, wrestling podcasts get non wrestlers on the show. Like I, I know yeah. they're expand. I know they're trying to expand their brand and everything. Yes, but the conversations always seem stunted to me. Yeah, like there, they there's always seem stunted. Well, I think I think there there is this like kind of brotherhood with wrestling that when you get like half the time when there's a language that's being spoken, right? 
Mm-hmm. Um, there's a different understanding for what they're getting into versus, you know, I, I, I when Jericho, because doesn't Jericho get a lot of people on that he kind of idolizes to begin with? Yeah. So, yeah. So I think that and has... And then he gets flat earthers occasionally. Which yeah. And then he's... um. And he's probably not as he's not as deep into the music industry as he is the wrestling industry. No, he's not as deep into the music industry as he likes to think he is. <laughs> okay, all right. Um, because he, I mean, anything he he, well, yeah, he's doing kind of small clubs and stuff, but he's not. I don't think he's scraping at the at the uh, music industry the way he would be if he kind of came from zero, right? So yeah, I, I, no, don't, I mean, I, I he like, has some he has some clout, obviously. Yeah. But. So it's like you know, they, they, I don't think he can have the conversation of how I came up in the music industry. Like he can have the conversation with somebody about how I came up in the wrestling industry. But I don't know. Um. Anyways, uh, yeah. so sorry, just just checking and had a note in here, and I don't know where that's going with. Um, anyways, uh, that's our big question. You know, again, it's always kind of fun to see what other people are doing, uh, podcast wise, uh, with these things. So, um, want to give a shout out, and then I got something special that Dave Podner gave me the other day that I wanted to bring up into the podcast. Um, Occupy Pro Wrestling. Hey, uh, our friends at OccupyProWrestling.com, Alex Carr is in the career there. Uh, they want to show their support to a good cause for Breast Car- Cancer Awareness Month. And uh, we, they'd love to have uh, you uh, be a part of it when you buy their merch at What a Maneuver. Uh, 50% of all normal merch proceeds will go to the Breast Cancer Research Foundation. But wait, there's more. They're finally releasing merch with their logo. And they even have it in pink. And 100% of the proceeds from these items will go to the foundation. Uh, check out all of the Occupy Pro Wrestling gear at whatamaneuver.net. I uh, get a link over there at occupyprowrestling.com, including more information about uh, their contributions to the Breast Cancer Research Foundation. And you can get more info about the Breast Cancer Research Foundation itself at bcrf. Dot org. Go check it out. Support a good cause and support our friends over there at Occupy Pro Wrestling. Man, Mike. Yeah, Sork. So. Man, I, it's okay. I read the chat room. I was swinging. I was swinging through a uh, one of my clients the other day. And one of our friends, of course, um, uh, uh, is there. It, it is kind of fun though, when I go to a real jobby job. Uh, uh, and, and, and we have two pro wrestling related friends for this podcast uh, that I ran into. Uh, but uh, I ran into Dave uh, Potter, the Tiny Shutter podcast. You might want to go listen to that since there's some new, he actually shared a really good article. I didn't bring up an awesome cast about like the new, uh, it's about the new, the uh, 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 iPhone camera and how they rebuild it. But that's for the other show. <laughs> Just flipping through this and <laughs> laughing, but he handed me, he found this, the Ooh. best of 2008 WWE magazine. Oh, man. It was a nice little time capsule. This is 10 years ago, guys. Uh, they even have little magazine awards in this one. Uh, so I thought, I, well, I, I want, first I want to draw attention to the cover. About who we have on the cover. Oh, Because oh. from, you know, the stars of yesteryear that we oh. never see on television Sword. today. Sword, can, how many people are on the cover? One, two. Oh, I mean, some of them are in here twice. But I have... Uh, Nine or ten people. Okay. One of them's in Ring of Honor now. I'll give you a hint there. Can can I guess them? All right, go ahead. 2008. Give me your guess. Real quick. Okay. Okay. John Cena. Yes. Randy Orton. Uh, No. Wow. Mm -hmm. Uh, Triple H. Yes. The Undertaker. Twice. (laughs) Ah! Mr. Kennedy. No. Damn. And one of them's in ROH now? Yes, that would be Matt Seidel. Uh, oh, ooh. actually, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Impact Wrestling. Uh, Kofi Kingston. Close. Shelton Benjamin coming off a ladder. <laughs> wow, that's that's no, that's not good. I don't think. Um, not by the position he's in in this picture. No. <laughs> 2008. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Batista. 
No. The hell? Mm-hmm. Um. Oh, I'm gonna close this. I'm gonna close the loop on this so we can move on. You have okay. Jeff Hardy. Okay. Twice. Uh, Shawn Michaels when he had his hair. Uh, Ray Ray's on here. Okay. Uh, and uh, Edge and Edge and uh, CM Punk are doing a cross body. I was other. gonna say CM Punk. Yes. No, uh, we were still we we're still very much objectifying our divas at the time, um, as they're on flotation devices in the bikinis. Uh, mm-hmm. You don't see much of that. They're anymore. also on tubes. They're on tubes. They are on tubes. Yeah, um, Chris Jericho was wearing a suit at this time. Oh, it's suit Jericho. It's suit Jericho, and he's got the title. So mm-hmm. it's after that happened. I actually did just listen to the was it. Is it Unforgiven? When no, or Judgment Day maybe, where they had like all those scramble matches that didn't make any sense. Um, the scramble we had, matches made perfect sense. Your best me. talk show of the year was the Dirt Sheet with one John mm-hmm. Morrison and uh, the Miz with his ah. fancy fedoras at the time. Excellent. Right? I think you're still maybe a chick magnet. They're they're both doing pretty well for themselves. Though. Yeah, they're they're both one of them. They're both doing movies, you guys. Yep, they are indeed. They oh, really God. played up that Hollywood. Oh, can we have Boone the Bounty Hunter crossover with the Marine? Oh, that would be amazing. Boone the Marine Hunter. Boone oh. the Marine Hunter. Oh, my God. Can we do this? The hardest right hardcore match. Um, is, that, is that Hardcore Henry, Hardcore Holly versus RVD? No. It's yeah. a New York City parking lot brawl at the Great American and- Bash between... JBL and John Cena. Oh wow! Look at that. There we Look go. Look at that. Hey, it's just like I'm looking through this, and I'm just like, wait a minute. I've seen all these people wrestle in the last year on WWE, practically. Sean <laughs> Benjamin. Sean Benjamin has has some kind of headlock on uh, our truth, who just yep. got like the biggest pop in ten years last week. Um, let's see. Randy Orton got hurt again. Nothing mm-hmm. changes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Matt Matt Hardy's cross body blocking um, a. Uh, a uh, a Mark Henry who uh, who I met this year. Um, let's see, let's see how sort of loyal to respect. Oh, Guys, the Shockmaster Award meant to Mike Adamley. Oh, hey, Sword, it was a great summer fest this year. It was a great summer fest. And Jeff Harvey did a great stunt at Hell. That's in the right. Summer. That's right. You had the newer tag team of one Ted DiBiase Jr. and Cody Rhodes. I wonder if ah. it happened to those two guys. Legacy. <laughs> well, well, one host parties in a parking lot, and the other one hosts ten thousand seat arenas, man. Yeah, yeah, maybe an NWA champion. Um, <laughs> what, the, what the heck? Oh, uh, no. Sorry, I got a note, and I don't. I'm not really comprehending it. Let's see. Ah, uh, that's why because I was looking through this because Kane didn't have a mask then, so maybe that's why I was confused earlier sure, in was the that show. Matt Striker on there. Uh, Matt Stryker. That is We're Matt Stryker. Matt Stryker was announcer of the year. Good for him. According to the magazine. Good which for Matt further Stryker. proves, as we used to say back in the day, that the magazine was written by people like us. The mag- that, that, was, that blurb was probably written by Matt Stryker. Your breakout of the year was Kofi Kingston, a very still Jamaican. Kofi boa, Kingston. Boa, boa. Boa, boa. Jeez. <laughs> Oh, man. Oh, so did we talk about the thing that Kofi um, recently accomplished? What did he do? What did he do? He is the longest reigning tag team champion in WWE history. Is that cumulative? Cumulative. Nice. He has held tag titles for over 954 days. Can you guess who had the best beard in 2008 in WWE? Ooh. You're gonna be very. I'm gonna happy. say. I'm gonna say Big Show. Ooh, let's see. Wait, wait, wait look at this picture. The yeah, he had a beard going there, but it wasn't super beard. Okay. Um, but that answer. <laughs> Paul Virgil. Michael Q Knoxville. <laughs> Michael Q Knoxville. Which is our Yay. name for Mike Knox for those that haven't been around, listening oh. to this podcast for ten years. Mike, he, he was born with Banshee. You know, we should really go back to 2008 and see what we were doing on the show. Well, there's a, um, there's a here's a hint. He was born with benches. Mm. Chad, come on. I, I get to hang out with Chad at wrestling shows at least. Oh, geez. That is. Oh, go ahead. And Greg, Greg Kali was making out with fans. Oh, I don't, think you could get, I don't think you could get away with that today. I bet the Riz would allow it. The Riz would allow it? The Riz would allow it, I believe. But, okay. Roll back a minute. Yeah. 
how fucking surreal life is right now. As Mike, you and I talk about this off air a lot about mm-hmm. some of the things that we experience these days around pro wrestling. Um, Facade shared. I saw this. I saw this. Facade shared. He's like, hey guys, paraphrasing. Hey guys, I just got sent this wonderful motivational vi- video on Facebook by the great Kali. Yeah. And I didn't get through it. It was it was just I wasn't in a, a spot for it, but it was um it was like life is like a wrestling ring. You take some hard bumps and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I really need to get through that. Uh <laughs> but but also just like, you know, and again, Facade is a guy that I've known since before he was a wrestler. And now he's just like, Yeah, man, so the great Kali sent me motiv- motivational quotes. That's a thing that happens in my life now. Um but yeah. Uh, again, this, this Jericho, uh, Jericho. Yes, yeah, so, Sorg, you forgot to mention Cody is also the new, uh, new Japan U.S. champ now too. Is he? Yeah, oh, I've, he's I've N- not been keeping up on New Japan. He's NWA and U.S. champion. Oh uh, he, wow! Yeah, he posted he posted a picture earlier this week that said, um, "Your new president," and he was holding up the NWA title and the New Japan U.S. title. Jeez. Um, Tina did a uh, line up here. Uh, let's see. So, 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 uh, Corey, no, Kofi, damn it, get names mixed up. Kofi, uh, is five times with a new day, one time yep. with Evan Bourne, yep. and one time with CM Punk all together. And, and also one time with Archer. Really? Yep. Wow. Yeah. Well, Kofi, Kofi's had a lot of tag titles. Jeez, Hornswoggle is still around. Jeez. These are the days. These were the days, guys. I don't know why are we reviewing video games in the back of this magazine. I don't get it. Sorry, because oh. because we gotta be selling, gotta be selling, sort. <laughs> oh, this is what. Are I, you thinking of video <laughs> games? I, hold on, I was trying to say, Alex. I, I was sent a note about it from Alex about uh, about somebody tell Sorg Mia plays uh, a PSP. It was a giant PSP commercial on or ad on the back of this that everybody's been looking at while I've been holding it up. Um, like, uh, they don't even sell a PSP anymore. You know what I'm sad I never got my hands on was a WWE Kids uh, magazine. Also, oh, there is there is also friend of the show, Jimmy Corderas. <laughs> there you go. Awesome. In this match with CM Punk, Rey Mysterio, Edge, and Chavo Guerrero. Ooh, wait, wait. Match. The match is Rey Mysterio and CM Punk versus Edge and Chavo Guerrero. Damn, that sounds like a really good time. Jeez. Yeah, that was back when um Ed, that was back when it was La Familia. La Familia. Mm-hmm. Jeez. But Sorg, oh, Sorg, yeah. can we Sorg, did you see the new ad for the WWE video game? I did. And as usual, the the ads are tremendously better. I'm than pretty the game sure. Is. I'm pretty sure that's the closest. That ad is the closest we will ever get to WWE's version of Lucha Underground. Like you had Jeff Hardy representing the Rabbit Tribe, basically. Yeah, okay. Uh, Charlotte was kind of Katrina because she was ghosting out of her dad's portrait, which looked not creepy at all. No. No, it definitely didn't. It looked super creepy. Um, I assume the Undertaker would be like a Mil Muertes because he explodes out of an urn. Um, there, there was a lot of stuff happening. Rey Mysterio can apparently copy himself. There, there was a lot of stuff going on. Somebody got him out of that cage. Thank you. Thank God. Yes. Maybe that's how he got out of the cage. He just kept multiplying until the cage imploded. Yeah. Yeah, that could be it. I mean, it, make, it makes sense. Oh, boy. Uh, the, I need to, the other thing I've learned is I need to, I need to pick up Fire, Fire Pro Wrestling. <laughs> <sighs> that's on PS4 only, right? Uh, it's also on PC, so I've been thinking about yeah, getting Steam. Because uh, uh, Shirley Doe keeps telling me about all the guys he's downloading. Oh no! Yeah, he's one of the. Oh uh, man! Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a thing. So, <laughs> all right. On that note, I want to give a final shout out tonight. Uh, is it, there is a. There's been a little show that happened across the street here. Um, is that about a month ago now? Near and near and up on uh, about a month ago. Uh, here was Lucha Fiesta Pittsburgh. And if you've seen on social media. Lucha Fiesta is going to Japan, you guys. Uh, so it started here as part of a bigger tour, and you can kind of get a, a look at what that looks like. Uh, it was it made its debut last Thursday on Fight T 
TV featuring Ultimo Dragon, Sam Adonis, Paul James, uh, the former, uh, oh damn, what was his name over there in uh, NXT? I've seen Bull James so much. Uh, Bull, Bull Dempsey. Bull Dempsey, thank Bull Dempsey. you. Uh, Shocker, uh, Caristico, uh, formerly known as Mystico in the original Sin Cara, and so many more. A lot of friends of the show featured on this show as well. It was a proper lucha style party. It was a fight party, if you will. You can go check it out. It's playing right now over on Fight TV. Look up Lucha Fiesta Pittsburgh, and you'll find that. Uh, check that out, and uh, we are, you know, hopefully they'll come back here to Beachview. Maybe we'll get another Lucha Fiesta for Cinco de Mayo. Who knows? But well, looking forward. It was a great time, and one of the many wrestling things apparently happening in this very neighborhood. I love wrestling in the city of Pittsburgh, uh, and it's completely happening more and more these days. So go check it out. Fight TV, Lucha Fiesta Pittsburgh, and see what all the fun was that. Uh, we had a lot, a lot to deal with. And somebody from Lucha Fiesta Pittsburgh that was featured uh, pretty well on there as well. Some videos that uh, have been going around. Uh, the Beastman will, just confirmed before this episode, will be returning to the show next week. Uh, Wes will be joining us again. Uh, and uh, we'll see what happens. We'll see what he's been visiting lately as the Beastman. So, Mike, tell me. What sorry, is- sorry, before we wrap up. I should tell you what else I'm going to get to see at Northeast Wrestling. Oh, no. Uh, Mike is so excited because he's going to his first, first indie show in like 10 years. Uh, no, not, not 10 years, <laughs> but I mean, if you count that Impact vs. Lucha show, that's the first indie show in this like a true. couple months. This is true. But, um, so I've already said that it's going to be Kenny Omega versus Phoenix, which, hot oh, damn. Uh, mm-hmm. But also going to be there. Uh, one Mr. Seto Miedo himself, Pentagon, is going to be at Northeast Wrestling. Nice. And, Who um, you interviewed, by the way. I have interviewed. You He's interviewed him. He is technically a friend of the show. Yes, yes. Um, you can check that out. Look up Pentagon, um, uh, an Indie Mayhem show on IndieWrestling.us or the com. Yes. Um, also, we ha- um, the Northeast Wrestling champion is Jack Swagger. Mm-hmm. Which in and of itself is awesome, but he'll be wrestling uh, one Mister Rob Van Dam. Yes, yes, and finally, Sorg, are you ready for this? In a no disqualification match, David Arquette is wrestling in Poughkeepsie. Oh jeez, oh jeez, is RC going? Uh-huh. No, R- no, it's not RC because you said uh, Hurricane Helms is joining him. Yeah, well, no, uh, it's it's a one-on-one match. Right, but he's, he's in his corner. I don't know, honestly. He, he wasn't in the graphics, so... Oh, I'm sorry. I, I thought he was in the one I was looking at. I might have been looking at a different show. Yes, uh, he, he's been at a couple different shows. Yeah. It's very weird. <laughs> but David Arquette's wrestling... We're going to have to get RJ City on the show. we gotta say we got to see if RJ will bring David Arquette on the show. <laughs> I, see what I may just it. ask him in Poughkeepsie. I'll be like, hey... Could you come on to do a commentary of Ray to Rumble with us? I feel like he's been asked that a million times. Actually, I bet he hasn't been asked that at all. Okay, first of all, he'd be like, David, love Scream. Uh, first of all, <laughs> do you get asked a lot about doing commentary for Ray, Ray to Rumble? Mm-hmm. Second of all, see how he responds. Yes. Pause for reaction. Mm-hmm. Second of all, Presuming he didn't vomit. Uh, would you with us? <laughs> yes. We can. Even if we just pick certain scenes, I'm okay with that too. Yeah. 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 You know what? I mean? You know what? You know what? You... I got a better idea. I don't want to give it out on the show, but fuck it. You know what would be more fun? What's that, Sorg? Sit down with David Arquette to watch No Holds Barred. Yeah. Okay. All right, yeah. That's that's an idea. That needs to happen. But those are other shows. Um <laughs> All right, Mad Mike, what did you learn from wrestling this week? Oh man, I oh, what did I learn this week? I learned that Seattle really misses basketball. That's that's I learned Seattle really misses basketball. That's that's what I learned. And that is something you learned in wrestling technically. That uh, is. Yeah. Yes, yes. I learned 
I learned, because Magnum CK had a lot to do at RWA this past weekend. Good to see him again. Always fun. I, I, I feel like I'm filming him. If he's in, if he's in the tri-state area, apparently I'm around with a camera. Um, but he he did a promo before in, in, in very, very, very um, um, explicitly. Uh, he does not do. You know, he's got a cape. He does his cape thing. What he comes out with. It's very, very macho man um, sort of uh, thing that he does. Uh, but if he does a promo, he's going to do it in a vest, a very mean vest, because the vest is for interviews, the cape is for the matches. It's kind mm. of a nice detail. Well, I mean, that's like a creative wrestler. Like you have you have one, you have one costume for your entrance, you have one costume for backstage segments. Yeah, yeah. that works. That's right. That's right. So, and you don't see that. You don't see that a lot. Like maybe they come out in like street clothes or something. Like he still came out in like when you see, you know. Street Magnum TK. <laughs> uh, you know, you don't, he's not dressed in like no shirt wearing a vest, which is very, now I think about it, it as very Magnum TA style. Never mind. That now makes sense. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> hey! Thor just learned something, you guys. Well, <laughs> well, do you remember how old school he was when uh, we had him first on uh, with uh, Jock Sampson? Like, it was mm-hmm. a very, like, he looked like he was straight from the 80s. Yeah, I, I assumed that was the whole gimmick the entire time. Mm-hmm. Well, it's, it's gone that, that way in a whole different way. Alex Miller learned that Pete Dune uh, has a new finisher where he puts you in a triangle and breaks your fingers. I want to know how they do the snap sound when like him and Marty Skrull do that. Um, I'll ask somebody in wrestling sometime. Uh, Alex Harris learned that uh, he'll at least get to watch Burning Bridges for free thanks to Blackcraft Wrestling. That's right. Their show in Anaheim. I was really sad because a lot of you guys named Alex in California uh, were going to go to that. Uh, <laughs> and I really wanted to get your take on, on the on the product and everything. Um, and, it, and it sounds like, uh, you know, something came up, It, it, uh, um, it unfortunately, and they, they did have to cancel the show. Um, but that's cool that you guys get burning bridges for free. Look for me. I, I think I'm wearing the green hat be- behind the announcers whenever they do those shots. So watch out for me and Rob back there. And actually, Toddy from Thrifty's back there. He flips off pe- uh, He flips off Paige's mom a lot. So there's that, too. They had a very direct um, interaction. Uh, Tina Keys. Actually, there's a lot. Actually, if you watch the audience on Blackcraft Wrestling, from Pittsburgh, you will probably notice a few friends of the show in the audience, uh, let alone in the ring. So, uh, so you guys will have fun with that. Ty Cross learned that he deserves to be on this show. Man, well, you should come to the studio. There you go. There you go. There was free pizza. There was a Trust lot of free me, pizza. If I wasn't eight hours away, I would have come to the studio for free pizza. And then Sork pretends to not know me, but he knows me. He's a dear friend. <laughs> oh, man. Um, and also, Tina Keys learned that Elias and KO know how to pick their spots. Uh, and, oh, and Alex Carr says, uh, Joey Janela is hosting a wrestling show in Los Angeles. Even if he has to do so on crutches. I didn't know that he was injured. But uh, <laughs> wow. Alex says, get in your car, Ty Cross FJ Town. Ty Cross FJ Town. I love it. <laughs> I love it. On that note, uh, like I said, Beastman will be here next week on this show. And then also, uh, I believe, I think I just committed to through some wrangling. Um, we were going to do uh, everybody that, that debuted on the IWC Proving Ground show uh, from the school. And they had their first matches. Like some one of them was against DJZ, Dylan Bostic, uh, <laughs> Chess Flexor. Uh, it, it, so we were going to get some original uh, uh, kind of or some initial kind of reactions from them. We are now, I think, splitting that show uh, to two sections, and that will well, be one uh, tomorrow night at 10 p.m. Wednesday night at 10 p.m. We'll be doing that, and I'm going to have to talk to them about the date for the next one um, because I believe we do have in uh, penciled in for uh, Wednesday. I believe that is October 7th, if I have my calendar correct. Um, that is going to be, no, the 10th. The 10th, uh, the I almost say this old name. Michael the Bomber Facade. No, Facade is going to be joining us. Wow, I'm going back 10 years, Mike. Wow. <laughs> it's that magazine. It put me in the mode for it. 
seriously, I mean, you might as well just have Shima Zion on and, you know, we'll get a whole bunch of It people. is overdue. As much as I talk we'll to get delicious Jimmy DeMarco. I don't know. I don't, he just stops by and waves in the window and then just doesn't come in. This is a Yeah, but this time he'd have his nipples out. Okay. Sorry, that's what he did 10 years ago. In studio. Like, it's not a joke. <laughs> Sorry, I just noticed a lot of really weird things on my calendar I didn't notice before. Um, like Sorg? Who put a kidnapping on the calendar? Brett Kavanaugh. Oh, okay. Uh, damn it, now we're that show. Thanks, Mike. <laughs> Mad Mike 483 on the Twitters. I'm at Sorgatron making really horrible Thank jokes. Thank you, this. producer Missy. Thank you, producer Missy, of course, putting up with this shit. We'll see you guys next week. Thank you, Mayhem Nation, joining us in the chat room. Mayhem out. Wait, just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait. Wait for the perfect time in the Don't give up what you want, take it back. Wait for the perfect time in the This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.